Hello everyone and welcome to another homebrew update. My name is Troy and I am your host. Now we have a lot of stuff to talk about today and it's going to be on a variety of consoles. I think it was six or seven different consoles we're talking about. So I have a feeling that this homebrew update will feel kind of all over the place. So um, yeah, let's just kind of go ahead and jump right in. The very first thing I'm going to be talking about is some encryption software with different consoles. Over on the Switch, the ReSwitch team had released a tool called Hack Tool. Now this lets you encrypt and decrypt different files of the Nintendo Switch, but you can't actually use it unless you have some of the keys required to read the files from the Nintendo Switch. Now, you won't be able to actually get the keys unless you have other exploits. Well, maybe some of those exploits are released to get it. Maybe all you need is Pegaswitch to get some of the keys. I really don't know. I didn't look too far into it. All I know is that you need some of the keys to actually encrypt and decrypt the files from the Nintendo Switch. Quickly switching over to the PlayStation Vita, we do have another encryption and decryption software, but this time it is in the form of an actual homebrew on this Vita itself. So it is called Vita Backup, and what it lets you do is back up your saves and also encrypt and decrypt those saves. You can also back up your trophy information, some system information, and quite a few other things as well. It's definitely something I will be using to back up all my saves with because I would like having backups of my save files. That way I don't have to, you know, restart the game all over again if something happens or if I want to take off the game and keep the save files like I just do it that way. Jumping over onto the PlayStation 4, we have a tool for the PC that people are calling the PS4 Registry Editor. Editor? Editor. It lets you encrypt and decrypt different PS4 registry files, and that's kind of cool. The things I remember most people editing with the registry is swapping the circle and X button, you know, because you know, over in Japan, um, it's circle is actually okay and X is no type of deal. Well, people over here like it as well, so they decided to swap it. Now, that actually isn't a confirmed thing, that's just kind of a Thing that I know that can be done with the registry, whether it's been done or not, I don't think it has yet on the PS4. Okay, now that we have all of the encrypted and decrypted software out the way on the various consoles, let's talk about Linux. Yes, we have Linux on two consoles now. Granted, one hasn't been released, the other one takes quite a bit of work to get working. The very first one I'm going to be talking about is the one I just said of the latter, which is going to be the Wii U. The Wii U now does have Linux on it, so if you're one of those people who try to get Linux on whatever thing you have, whether it be PC or running it from an Apple TV or even your game consoles, now you can have it on the precious Wii U. There are quite a few steps that you need to take to actually get it running on the Wii U, but it's definitely possible, and I'll put a link in the description to it. The other console that has Linux on it, but the people will not release it, is on the Nintendo Switch. The Fail Overflow team tweeted a picture that they have Linux running on the Nintendo Switch. Now, what firmware version it's on, I don't know. My guess is probably any of them, since they actually have a bootloader exploit that they keep to themselves. Anyway, they will not be releasing the Linux exploit or anything like that, because they usually don't release things. They just kind of tease you with it. But in my experience, people do tend to find ways to get Linux on it or find ways to do the same thing that Fellow Flow does, even though they don't release it. Now time to talk about some exploits, some actual hard evidence exploits that people have been waiting for because that's what homebrew is mainly about. Over on the 3DS scene, we have a new DSiWare exploit that lets you Essentially, brute force a way to run DSiWare hacks onto your 3DS. It involves using a PC as well as some different IDs from your Nintendo console and things like that, but it is possible. I myself don't know exactly how it works, I just know it involves brute forcing in a PC and using a 
GPU over a CPU. Uh, there's a lot of stuff into it. I highly recommend if you want to look at this to check out the zip file. Inside the zip file, there's a readme file that will explain everything, like the pros and cons, as well as the best way to run it type of deal. Over on the PS3, the PS3 exploit team have released a little statement for all the people who do not have compatible PS3s that work for the PS3 exploit. What they said was for the people who do not have compatible PS3s to work on the exploit to stay on 4.81 and that's all I said. Nothing more, nothing less. I have no clue what it's about, but I would highly suggest if you are still on 4.81 to stay on that, do not upgrade to 4.82. Now, I have a feeling that a lot of people probably updated a 4.82 because the very first PS3 exploit was able to be able to run on 4.82 with the older consoles, and now with the newer consoles, it's apparently not so sure. I do hope that they do find something for the people who are on 4.82 and not just, you know, on 4.81. I really have a feeling that they will. And last but not least, we have some of the biggest news on the PS4. Granted, it has not been released yet, or I don't know if it ever will, but someone has found a way to exploit the PS4 through the rest mode. Yes, when your PS4 is snoozing off into PS4 dreamland, you can actually run some executable code into its dreams and exploit the PS4 that way. It is very cool and I really like the idea of it, but it's also not released and we don't know if it's gonna be released. The good thing about it though is there's actually a whole talk about it that the creator and developer um, did for it. So you could actually look at that and try and see if you could figure out any ways to do it from there. I really haven't actually even watched the whole talk he did or the conference he did. So I don't know what all is in there. So just kind of check out and see what's on there. And with all that said, that is all the homebrew for this week. I know guys it was kind of all jumbled and it felt like a mess even after me reading the script and making the video it still felt like a mess. I just didn't really know of any better way to do it. So this is kind of what you get. I'm sorry if it's not the best quality video. <laughs> I'm doing my best here. Anyway, so I left you all with a question of what is your favorite rhythm game and no one answered. So I'm just going to go ahead and tell you my favorite rhythm game that I've been playing for the past 9, 10 years or so. That would be Project Diva or Hatsune Miku, Project Diva and all those other games. It started with a PSP and then it's on the PS3, now it's on the PS4. So yes, that is definitely my favorite rhythm game. I've also played other ones such as Dance Dance Revolution, Parappa the Rappa and more and more and more. The question for this video is going to be, who is your go-to Super Smash Brothers character? Now this can range from any of the games, it doesn't have to just stop at, you know, just the first one or Super Smash 4, it can be any of the ranged games, so just tell me what it is. And of course I will tell you which one mine is next video. Alright guys, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I really do hope you enjoyed this messy video. If you did, hit that like button as well as that subscribe button and the little bell icon so that way you don't miss any of my future videos. With that, guys, I will see you next video.